Statistics and Excel. Standard error estimated standard deviation of X bar correction factor. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, four tabs down below, two examples, practice and a blank tab. The example tabs, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The the blank tab, the one we will be working in, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we do so. Let's go to the example tabs to get an idea of what we will be building, starting with example tab number two. This is what we're actually going to be constructing, basically breaking down the concepts of this formula into our table on the right. Let's get some context as to why we are doing that by going to example tab number one, we will not be constructing this this time, but rather this is what we've constructed in a prior presentation. If you missed that prior presentation, you might wanna take a look at it. It's an excellent presentation. However, you don't really need to, to move forward with this one because we'll give you the quick recap here. So we basically have the idea here that we want to get some information about a larger population. Typically what we do is we take a sample of that population, we look at the characteristics of the sample, and we try to determine whether or not we can apply those characteristics to the larger population. Now in our case, the larger population, we're gonna say is only seven items. Usually the larger population might be a whole lot larger than the sample that we are taking. This time, in order to demonstrate what we want to demonstrate, we're taking a larger population of only seven, and we're taking our samples of just three items of the seven items. Now, one of the things we would like to be able to do is use that nice bell-shaped curve because we know a lot about the bell-shaped curve and can define it with basically two numbers, one being the center point, that being the mean or average, and the second being the spread, otherwise known as the standard deviation. However, we know that the actual data, the population, might not have a bell-shaped curve. It might be skewed to the left, might be skewed to the right, might have a more of a normal type of distribution. However, the central limit theorem tells us that if we took multiple samples, in our case, we're gonna take the theoretical extreme here, that's what we did last time. If we take samples of three, and we did all possible samples out of the population of, in this case, only seven items, then, then we took the mean of all those samples, so now we're taking the mean of every three samples, uh, then this data, the, the standard deviation of this data or this data would tend towards more of a bell-shaped type of curve. And so that it means that when we look at our two numbers, one being the mean, the central point, we have the mean of the actual population, we have the mean of each individual samples of three in this case, and we have the mean of the means of all combinations of three uh, that we took. All of those, however, should be going towards this, the mean of the population. So the mean is fairly straightforward. We're probably gonna get the best estimate with this mean. It'll be exact in this case because we took all combinations, but even the mean of the sample should tend towards the, the mean of the actual population. The standard deviation, however, is more confusing because although the standard deviation of the population gives us a measure of spread, it doesn't tell us the shape of the population uh, per se, and it might not be bell-shaped. If we, we could also take the standard deviation of one 
uh, of one sample of three in this case, but that's also not what we're looking for in terms of that bell-shaped curve. What we're trying to get is the standard deviation of all the means as though we took every possible combination. So that's what we did here to give, to give an example. We took every combination to prove that. However, in practice, of course, we're not going to be able to take every combination of samples. That's the point. We're taking a sample because we can't measure everything about the entire population. Therefore, what we need to do is approximate the standard deviation of all of the means. And that's where we derive this formula. So this formula basically is giving us the standard deviation, not of the, the population, standard deviation, not of the sample, standard deviation of as though we took every possible combination of whatever sample size, in our case three here, uh, and then we took the standard deviation of the mean of all of those. And that's the thing that's going to tend towards the bell-shaped uh, curve. So that means that, so hopefully but that gives us an intuitive idea of how they derived this formula to get some conceptual understanding of it so that when we apply this formula, we're not just mechanically putting together steps because it's hard to memorize things that way. In other words, if you say, why are you doing the formula at this part in this practice problem? And your answer in your mind is, well, that's because step number three says, I just apply this formula and then it spits out the answer you're acting like a calculator and you don't really have the conceptual idea and we don't need to break down all of the math to understand it conceptually but but basically we want to get the idea of of what we're what we're what this formula is basically simulating because it will be easier to us conceptualize it and then apply that concept possibly to other things uh, in the future now in practice we might have this standard deviation of the population we're going to assume that in the start that we do have that we have the standard deviation of the population uh and and uh but then we'll change that if we don't have the standard deviation of the population the standard deviation of the sample might be used of course to approximate the standard deviation of the population so that we can get in essence the standard deviation of the x bars which would be the approximation of all combinations <laughs> that we're looking at for this particular uh example also, if you have a binomial situation where possibly it's a survey and you have a yes or no question, so there's only two outcomes to it, then this formula could be a little bit different. We'll look at that uh, type of situation in a future presentation. All right, so given that, let's go to the, the, the practice tab has pre-formatted cells so you can work through it that way. I'm gonna copy this formula and bring it over here. Now to draw this formula, if you wanted to make it you can do that by going to the uh, insert and then equation. And you could just use this ink drawing and, and you can basically, even if you just have a mouse and not a pen, this actually works pretty good, right? You can say, okay, even if it's pretty sloppy, this equals, and you can see it messed that up, but I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm gonna put another one of these up top and then a square root of N and notice this is all messy up top. It's not doing exactly what I want, but then you can go in and circle this and say, okay, hey, look, this should have been, uh, it's still, it's still, oh, there it is, should be the sigma. And uh, this, this, they got this one right, but this N is wrong. So this N, this N, doot, 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 it missed it, doot, 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 should just be an N. So, so you can basically build this formula out and then now this is wrong. Do, do, do. This should be just like a normal bracket. Oh, now it's still messed up. This should be like a left bracket. I don't know, but you can play with it. It's a little wonky, but it works pretty, pretty good. But we're gonna keep it here. So we've constructed uh, this formula. Now we're gonna give our, our given data. Let's imagine that we have the standard deviation of well, before I do this, let's format the sheet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's select the entire sheet, right click on it and put our baseline formatting. Format the cells. I'm gonna to go to the currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign. We'll remove the decimals to start off with, adding them as needed, okay. And then I like going to the home tab to make it bold. You don't need to make it bold possibly, but I think bold works when doing the presentations on a screencast. All right, so STD, 
of the population. This is the STDs of the population. 190, 190 STDs out there. Standard deviation of the population we're going to imagine. So then we're gonna say N equals the sample size. Sample size. So in our example over here, we had a population of seven. Sample size was three. Uh, usually you're gonna have a, a sample size that's gonna be a lot smaller compared to the population for most of the things you're measuring. So maybe the sample size, let's say, is, is uh, 250. Let's make this a little bit larger now. And then let's build our table. Now I'm gonna construct our table. We're gonna say N. N for us is gonna equal the pop uh, size. Now notice, uh, hold on a second. What happened there is que paso, pop size. Now when these get kind of long, you could wrap the text by going to the home tab alignment and wrap the text but i don't like doing that because then it makes a fat cell here or a wide cell uh, and that messes anything up to the right of it so unless i'm going to insert a table in which case i need one cell with a header on it not two cells i will typically undo that and say i want the size bit to be on another cell and then i'll make both of these cells black and white so it still looks neat even though it's on two lines so that I can have my headers. So there's the pop, this should be pop. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be N over little n, which is the sample size, divided by N, which is the population, is that greater than, we're gonna say 5%, and that's gonna be a question. So we're gonna say, is that greater than 5%? I'm gonna pull this to the bottom. And then we're gonna say, uh, uh, we'll actually do another one i'll say equals this that same thing i'm going to say true or false we'll give a little true false formula to give us that answer uh and then we'll say we have the standard error that we'll calculate which we'll talk about in a second we'll have the correction factor factor and then we've got the standard error times the correction factor. Hopefully I spelled all that correctly. Let's make this a little smaller so we can see everything on one page. I'm gonna select all of these, make them my header by going to the home tab, font group. We'll make this black and then white so it all looks like it's a header. And then let's center it. And then I'm gonna select all of it up top in the rows and double click in between them to get it as small as it can while still fitting everything in there. All right, and then let's select this one. This is gonna be my data that we started with. So I'm gonna make this actually orange. That's kind of like our given data. That's what I'm gonna start using for like the data that's been given to us. And I'll put brackets around it. So we want to analyze this formula. So if we, if we know this information, I want to break out this formula because the two numbers I need to, to, to make something into a bell-shaped curve, even if the population itself isn't bell-shaped, is one, the middle point, the mean, which we can possibly get from the sample or at least an approximation, and two, the standard deviation of the X bars, which we talked about before. That's going to be the idea that we uh, need. So there's two parts of this formula. One is the standard deviation of the, of the uh, population divided by the square root of n, which we said is the sample size, which in our example over here was three out of a population of seven. But in our case, we're saying the sample size is 250, and we're gonna approximate a population of 400,000, uh, 400,000, uh, 150,000, 25, 10,000 10, and 3,000. In other words, what would happen if we took the sample remaining the same, we took a sample of 250 of whatever we are sampling out of a population that was much larger, 400,000, or a sample of 250 out of a population of 150, 25,000, 10,000, or 3,000. Now, as we do this, this could get a little counterintuitive and a little bit confusing if we get different concepts mixed up. So let me try to explain a few of those concepts. One of the problems, you would think that if I have a larger N, a larger sample, that would be good uh, 
because then I'm getting a larger thing to sample compared to the population. And typically it is good. However, there's not like a one-to-one -one like relationship. In other words, you would think that the larger the, the sample I get, then I'm gonna get much more accurate data and, and that relationship is, is not exactly correct. And this is the analogy that you can compare to like the cup of soup, right? If you have a can of soup and you want to taste how salty it is, you can take a teaspoon of the can of soup as long as it's stirred up properly and taste it and see whether or not it is too salty. If you have a whole bucket of soup that you're going to be feeding to a whole uh, host of people, then you could still basically stir up the soup and take a teaspoon of the soup. You don't have to like down a whole gallon of the soup to determine if it's too salty or not. There's conceptually kind of a similar concept here with the sample size. You might think, man, 400,000, that's a large sample. That would mean that the, the number, uh, I mean, that's a large population. So the number of samples would need to go up relative to a smaller population to get the same level of confidence intuitively that but that's so that's one thing uh, that we need to that we need to keep in mind conceptually the other thing is that this formula has what we're going to call the correction factor over here so the correction factor we don't always need and the correction factor that's why we have this five percent so if n which is the sample compared to the population is greater than five percent meaning that means n is relatively large compared to the larger sample, then I have to use the correction factor, which kind of seems counterintuitive because you'd be like, well, wait a sec, it's good. Wouldn't it be better if the sample was large compared to the population? It is possibly conceptually better. Although again, we just talked about the relationship not being exact in terms of how big the population, the sample needs to be in ratio to the population. But for this particular formula, uh, if the sample size is close to the size of uh, the population, then we have to add this correction factor just due to the, to the way basically the formula works. All right, and then the other thing that we have to keep in mind is the question as to whether or not the X bars are going to be tending towards a bell-shaped curve. In other words, do we have a sample that is large enough so that the central limit theorem will take effect so that if we have a population that is not bell shaped or whatever the shape of it is how big of a sample do i need to have so that the x bars that we would take that data would tend towards a bell shape due to the central limit theorem and again in that case the larger the sample typically the better up to a certain limit right and then and then and then so you don't have to keep on going up past it so those are the three things we're considering this time we're considering this bit do i have to use this correction factor which normally you don't because normally the sample that we take is going to be quite small compared to the population so let's break that out and see and see that uh in detail so now we're going to say okay what in compared to this is going to be equal to n which I'm gonna say is 250. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard because I wanna copy that down and divide it by the population, which will start at 400,000 and then we'll take that same 250 at three at 150,000 and so on. Let's go back on it, percentify to recognize. So I'm gonna go number group, percentify to recognize, and then we'll add some decimals. And then I'm gonna double click on it and copy it down. So you can see what happens here when we have 400,000, then you could see that the, the sample compared to the population is going to be, uh, is, is going to be small, right? So this over this is, uh, is not greater than the 5%. And here it's still pretty, pretty large in compared to a sample of 250. So we're still not over the 5%. And then here we're still not, and then here we are over uh, the 5%. So in this case, this is the one where we'd have to basically add this correction factor, which again, seems kind of counterintuitive because you're like, wait a sec, isn't it good? Like what you, isn't it good that the sample? Yeah, it's kind of good because it's more likely that it's going to be a bell shaped uh, curves due to the central limit theorem. 
and so on. If you take the X bar uh, data, and we have a, a larger sample compared to the population, and so on. But with this particular formula, then you have to add this this bit to it with this general rule, which is somewhat arbitrary, which normally you don't need because normally the sample size is pretty small compared to the population. All right, let's do a a logic equation. So I could just say is I could just say equals uh, this is that greater than let's say 0 0.05 for 5% 0 0.05 and it's going to say false. So it's not greater than 5%, not greater than 5%. And of course, this one is greater than 5%. And so it gives us basically a true. So there's our little uh, item there. And then let's calculate the standard error. Now, the, stan the, the standard error we can think about as this part. So I'm breaking this out as the standard error part of the formula versus the correction factor part of the formula. So the standard error is calculated as the standard deviation of the population, which remember, we don't always know. If we didn't know what it was, we'd have to possibly approximate it with the standard deviation of the sample, which is different, again, than the standard deviation of all the X bars, which would be as though we had all possible samples of whatever sample size, in this case, that being all possible samples of 250 out of the 400,000 population, which would be impossible or take a whole lot of time for us to like approximate right but the formula that's the idea of what the formula is trying to do okay so we're taking that let's say f4 on the keyboard and divide that by the square root which is sqr the square root of n uh and the n is the is the sample so i'm going to take the 250. now now notice that this bit right here doesn't take into consideration the population at all. So the population is going to change, but the standard error calculation will not change. I'm going to select F4 on the keyboard because both of these numbers are outside of our table. We're not taking into consideration the population side to, to calculate the standard error part of this formula. Let's add some decimals. Boom, boom. Copy it down. That means we're going to get the same number all the way down because the this number of the population isn't in it. Let's calculate this part of it then. So this part is going to be equal to the square root, square root calculation. And then I'm going to put uh, another bracket for the top bit. And now we're taking it into consideration. So there's the population size, 400,000 minus little n, which is the sample, 250. This is outside of our table. Therefore, F4 in the keyboard, closing that up. And then we're dividing by, so I'm going to say over, divided by, and then brackets again. So I can do this operation first within the brackets. That's going to be, once again, the 400,000 minus, and we just say one. And then close up those brackets, and then close up the brackets for the square root, and enter. So if I add some decimals, doot, doot, doot. Let's just go to here. And then I'm going to copy this down. Hopefully it I've got my my everything correct. All right, so so I think that's right. Okay, so that so that's good. So now so now look what happened here. The standard this part of the formula is the same, no matter no matter what the the population size. And if the population size is large, meaning little n is is very small compared to the population, the correction factor is one which means if I multiply these two together, it's not gonna change this number at all, which is why we can just drop this correction factor. It's not really helping us at all uh, when n is large. So basically when n is large, then the relationship between the sample to n is gonna be relatively small, and therefore the correction factor is gonna tend towards one, which means it's not going to change the actual standard error factor because if we multiply it by one, it doesn't change. Here, it's pretty close to one, so it's still not going to change it much. And then we can see it's going further away from one as we get a smaller n. And then here, now it's going to be somewhat significant, and this is when we would have to basically use that second bit. So most of the time, n is going to be fairly large, and we can't usually take a sample that's going to be that close to the actual population, and therefore the correction factor would be tending towards one, 
which means we can usually just uh, drop off the second bit and just use this side, which we're calling the standard error part of the formula of x bar. So in other words, if I multiply these out, 12.02 times this one, now we're just multiplying these two sides of the formula, adding some decimals. Note this one's a penny different, because if I add like one more decimal here, it's actually 0.9997 but it's pretty close to one and therefore not much change not much change here and the and not much change here but a little bit more a little bit more change here and then here the change becomes somewhat significant which is why if this were true meaning n little n over big n sample size divided by the population if that is a fairly if that if that's fairly large sample size is fairly large compared to the population over the five percent we might then have to use this uh, correction factor and that's going to be the general idea all right so let's make all of these like blue and bordered home tab font group make this uh, bordered and blue and then maybe we can say uh, uh, use use correction factor to not use correction factor so we're going to use correction factor uh, if it's true and not uh, and not use it if it's false and just to get an idea of this and then we could say let's say f a l s e and then i can say let's go ahead and format these i'll do a format painter and say if this Da, 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 is equal to false we're going to say don't use it and then if this is equal to let's say uh equal to true then i'm going to make that green meaning we have to uh did i get that backwards that means not use do we have to use the correction factor and not use the correction let's do it that way I got it backwards. So this is the one we have to use the correction factor, this side, if little n over big n is greater than 0.05%. We're not going to use the correction factor if little n over big n is greater than 5%, which will typically be the case if we're dealing with a population that is fairly large because we will not be able to take a sample large enough compared to the population in that case. Now remember, the things that we have to keep in mind here then to keep them all, all these things straight is that a larger sample size typically is good, but the level of confidence doesn't necessarily go up uh, from the sample size compared to the population because we have the analogy of sampling the soup to see how salty it is. We don't need a huge bucket of the soup. However, we also have the concern of how large the sample size needs to be so that we can apply the central limit theorem so that we can get a bell-shaped curve of the X bars approximating all of the samples. And and again, we get to basically a limit where that where the where the that will happen. It will tend towards a bell-shaped curve. And then once we've hit that we might not get a whole lot more benefit in terms of that concept by adding you know, larger samples. And then there's the concept, do I have to use this second bit of the formula, which is a little counterintuitive, because in that case, the larger the sample size is related to the population, the more likely you might have to use this uh, second bit of the formula in order to approximate the standard deviation of the X bars which is the thing that tends towards a bell-shaped curve, remembering the two things we need to define a bell-shaped curve are the mean, which we can approximate either with the population itself, if we had that, or with, this, with the sample, uh, one sample, or with the uh, X bar of all of the samples as though we had all combinations of the samples. And then we need the standard deviation, remembering we're not looking at the standard deviation of the population or that of the sample but rather the standard deviation of all of the x bars which is we're imagining the average of all possible combinations of samples in this case of 250 out of a population size of 400,000 150 25,000 10,000 and 3,000 uh, respectively that's the general concepts we're trying to keep straight